Today's the day. I'm finally going to develop some color film at home. Stick around and I'll take you through the whole process step by step. All right, there are a lot of different C41 developing kits out there. There's Unicolor, Cinestill, Bellini, Tetanol. There's liquid ones, there's powder ones. The one I'm gonna to use today is the Cinestill Color Simplified CS41 liquid kit that makes a quart. So some of the details today will pertain particularly to this kit, but I think a lot of the principles will apply to other kits as well. Now, having said that, today you're gonna to see my setup and my way of doing things. Is my way the best way? Maybe not. Is my way the only way? Definitely not. So everybody has their own way of doing things. So today throughout the video, I'll go ahead and mention other alternative ways of doing things as well. So step number one is breathe, relax. Trying something new can be intimidating and stressful, but we didn't get into film photography to be stressed out. This is supposed to be fun, right? Uh, I look at it this way. What's the worst thing that can happen? We might ruin a couple rolls of film. And it is true, all of our pictures are important on some level or we wouldn't take them, but some pictures are irreplaceable. So for the first time, I probably wouldn't develop wedding pictures or rolls from that once in a lifetime trip. All right, let's head in the kitchen and get started. We're gonna start with a brief overview of all the materials we need to develop our color film at home, starting with the chemistry. So again, I did order the Cinestill CS41 Color Simplified Quart Kit, liquid kit. And uh, one of the reasons I ordered this Cinestill kit is that I had a very good experience with the Cinestill DF96 Monobath for black and white film. And Cinestill is also known for excellent support materials. They have PDFs online, answers a lot of your questions. And uh, you'll see here, they've got very concise and easy to follow instructions here. Uh, and another nice thing, everything is color coded. Uh, red corresponds to the developer. Blue is gonna be for your Blix. And then the gray is the stabilizer, the final rinse. And then they have this handy chart here you can take with you. Uh, to wherever you're developing and it's uh, printed on heavy cardstock and it talks you through all the steps, the temperatures, the times, the order of them and again, all color coded. As are the chemicals here. Three chemicals, part A, B and C make up your developer, all in red. Blue in here again, Blix, which is a combination of bleach and fixer. And then your gray bottle here is the stabilizer final rinse. Behind that you'll see our light tight film developing tank and it already has the uh, film loaded onto the reels inside and of course the process for loading the reels is the same whether you're developing color or black and white so if anybody has any interest in uh, seeing that process loading the reels in more depth uh, let me know in the comments below I'll go ahead and make a video on that and uh, share that with you next to that we have our distilled water we are going to use distilled water to make our chemicals because you never know what's in your tap water it might have some uh, mineral content you don't want or maybe some impurities so can't go wrong with distilled water again it's very inexpensive at the store in front here you see a couple of measuring cups uh, this one here already has measured in 20 ounces of distilled water to use for the developer next to that you'll see 18 ounces in this cup for the Blix behind that we have uh, a big pitcher from the dollar store this one is filled with 30 ounces of distilled water and that's to use for the stabilizer. Stabilizer is a little bit easier in that you can mix that one at room temperature. You have to be more, uh, a little bit more careful to heat up the Blix and the developer. And that's what we're gonna do over here at the sink. All right, so right here, you're gonna see our plastic tub. We're gonna use this for our water bath to maintain those consistent temperatures. And to help us do that, we've got an immersion circulator here that's used for sous vide cooking. So it helps maintain those consistent temperatures. Here you see a couple more of those pitchers. Again, the pitchers are a lot bigger than the volume of uh, solutions we're gonna mix. And uh, that's so we've got plenty of room to stir there. And it also helps guard against cross-contaminating one chemical to the other. Uh, I didn't want these floating around in the water bath freely. So I went ahead and just used some household clamps here to clamp them down and make sure they stay where they're supposed to. Uh, and again, use color coding here. This is just a clamp. I just wrapped some blue tape on here, painter's tape, and the blue is going to be for the Blix. And then the red clamp back here, of course, corresponds to the developer. Same color coding over here for the spatulas that I'm going to use to mix with. Blue for Blix, red for the developer, and then the green one by default is just going to be for the stabilizer final rinse. Uh, to help verify we're up to temp, got a simple thermometer here. Phone's sitting here because I'm going to go ahead and use 
my uh, stopwatch in here to keep track of the time. And then over here, after we get our chemicals mixed, you're going to see where we're going to pour them into. I've got uh, three bottles here, one for, again, developer, one for stabilizer, one for Blix, each with their own funnel. You can reuse the same funnel for uh, all three of these, but if you do that, you've really got to rinse it up very well because if you cross-contaminate, for example, and get the Blix into the developer, uh, it's going to kill your developer and it's lights out. So make sure if you're going to use the same funnel, reuse it, uh, rinse it real well between steps. Now that we checked out all the materials, let's uh, go ahead and start mixing. All right, we're gonna pour in our distilled water first, starting with the 20 ounces for the developer. And next, got our 18 ounces for the Blix. Now we're going to start our water bath. And once this rises to the appropriate level, we'll be able to plug in our immersion circulator and uh, get that going. The developer needs to be mixed at 120 degrees Fahrenheit and the Blick should be at 125 degrees. So we're gonna set the immersion circulator for 125. And when it gets up to 120, we'll start mixing in all the components of the developer. All right, so here's our stabilizer. We have 30 ounce of distilled water. We're gonna pour in our two ounce bottle of stabilizer. and stir it up real well. Again, stabilizer can be done at room temperature. Stabilizer is ready to go into the bottle. We are up to 120 degrees, ready to go ahead and mix up that developer. Part A first. Stir it up real well with our red spatula. Ready for part B. Stir well again. And finally part C. All right, 125, ready to go for the Blix. Part A first. And stir well with the blue spatula. Part B next.
cluster again. And now part C. Now part C is the part of the Blix that can stain, so we want to be extra careful with this and that we don't spill. And stir one more time. All right, all mixed up. We're gonna take it out of the bath. Uh, in the meantime, I'm also gonna warm up some distilled water for our initial pre-soak. Here's our developer. And now our flex. Okay, I've started another water bath because the target temperature of our developer is 102 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature really is pretty critical for this part of the process. I found a little bit better thermometer for this part too because again, we want to make sure we're right on temp. One thing I'll mention about that is bring your chemistry up to temp. I noticed this when I was mixing the chemicals. Sometimes the temperature of your water bath may not be the same as the temperature of your chemistry. So again, measuring that with the thermometer is super critical. And uh, one trick to get it up to temp maybe a little bit quicker is you can always set the target temperature on your immersion circulator a little bit higher than the actual temperature that you need. So for example, if you want to get 102 degrees Fahrenheit in your chemistry, you can crank up the immersion circulator to something more like, let's say maybe 110 degrees or something like that. So that's definitely an option to consider. The bottles I'm using today are nothing fancy. They're just green glass bottles. Uh, the glass bottles are nice in one sense because uh, they've got enough weight to them that they stay put in the water bath and are not going to be bobbing around all over the place. That's one potential disadvantage of plastic bottles. Uh, they might not stay where you set them because they're a little bit too lightweight. One big advantage of the plastic bottles is that you can squeeze the extra air or oxygen out of the bottles and potentially extend the life of your kit a little bit longer. I'm not super concerned about the shelf life of this particular kit because I've got 12 more rolls of film to develop, so I'm probably gonna burn through this kit in pretty short order. But let's say, for example, you have maybe just two rolls to develop and then you're going to let your chemistry sit for a month or two. It's nice to have that extra shelf life built in. Okay, we're up to temp at 102 degrees Fahrenheit for our chemicals. So now it's time to get out our instruction card from Cinestill with all the instructions. Step one is an optional pre-soak for one minute, uh, which I am going to go ahead and do. So we're going to pour our 102 degree water into the tank and soak it for one minute. Our film is going to start out, of course, colder than 102 degrees, so this pre-soak will help warm up the film. And that way it won't drag the temperature of the developer down in the next step. Got my phone here with the timer on it. Our instruction card indicates that we don't have to agitate during the pre-soak. And uh, these developing tanks are not that heavy. I'm gonna just kind of hold them in place so it doesn't bob around in the water. Our minute is up. I'm gonna go ahead and dump out the water. Water has kind of a pink cast to it as I dump it out. We're ready for step number two, the developer. We're gonna develop for three and a half minutes and the card indicates continuous agitation for the first 10 seconds and then four agitation cycles every 30 seconds after that. I'm gonna go ahead and use the swizzle stick method because I can leave the tank in the bath and my tank leaks a little bit too. You can see I'm doing this without gloves, but if you're more comfortable working with these chemicals uh, using gloves or even protective eyewear, uh, that's certainly not a bad idea. Keeping in the bath, agitating using the swizzle stick. Back and forth, okay. Typically do give it a good little tap. Disperse the bubbles. All right, gonna agitate again. One and a half minutes in, agitate again. Four agitation cycles. Quick tap. All right, 
three and a half minutes are up, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the developer back into the bottle. Step number three is gonna be the Blix. That's gonna be for eight minutes. We're gonna treat it the same way, agitate for the first 10 seconds. And then four cycles every 30 seconds afterwards. The Blix is the one you're gonna see that's blood red, it can stain, so you have to be extra careful not to uh, spill it. You really don't wanna mix the developer and the Blix together. Matter of fact, a lot of people like to do a rinse between the developer and the Blix, and I think it sounds like a pretty good idea. I'm not gonna do it today because I wanna follow the Cinestone instructions explicitly to the letter, and they do not tell you to do that. But I think on the next match, uh, next batch, I may go ahead and try that. Blix is next. Uh, the Blix step is not quite as critical on the temperature. The card here says you have some leeway between 75 degrees and 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So, Blix goes in next. I'll rinse off that agitation stick. Quick tap, another agitation at every half minute. And I'm not gonna make you sit through eight minutes of Blix. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit and uh, catch you on the next step. Our eight minutes are up, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour the Blix back into the bottle. Now at this point, our film is already developed and fixed so it can be safely exposed to light. As a matter of fact, on the instruction card it says, the remaining steps may be performed in room light with the tank lid off. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off. I'm probably also gonna go ahead and dump this bath and get this out of the way, because we don't really need that for the remaining steps. And I'm gonna go ahead and tap off the licks. When it airtight as possible. All right, step four is wash for uh, three minutes. It says running water or fill an empty tank seven times. Uh, I'm just gonna use running water. You want the water to be between, again, 75 degrees and 105, just like the Blix, so. A lot of latitude there, which is nice. All right, our three minute wash is done. So we're ready to do our last step in the tank and that is our stabilizer or final rinse. This is again at room temperature for a half minute to one minute. And we're gonna agitate for the first 15 seconds. Give that agitator another rinse. Stabilizer in, agitate. After the stabilizer, some people like to do a photo flow rinse to avoid water spots. Uh, some people even add a few drops of photo flow uh, right into the stabilizer. I'm not gonna use photo flow this time because again, I wanna follow Sinistow's instructions as closely as possible. Uh, plus using distilled water to mix the chemicals should help guard against uh, some of the pitfalls of hard water and water spots. Right. Our minute of final rinse or stabilizer is up. So let's go ahead and pour that stabilizer back into the bottle. All right, we're gonna take out the first roll. We shake off as much excess water as we can. We're gonna hang them up to dry. Good sign. I can already see we have images on there. Now these are 36 exposure rolls, so I'm gonna hang them in my kid's bathroom. Uh, 24 exposure rolls and 120 I can hang in the laundry room, but 36 exposure rolls, these are a little bit too long, so let's head upstairs, hang these up.
All right, simple utility clamp at the top. And fridge magnet at the bottom. Okay, we're gonna let this dry for a couple hours and I'm gonna scan a few of the strips and we'll check out the results. All right, the negatives are cut. We're ready to scan with the Epson V550 right here. Uh, these images were taken on Fuji Superior 400 with my Canon SureShot Owl. I'm probably only gonna share a few images here because I'm saving some of them for a review video of the Canon SureShot Owl coming up. Let's see what we got. Hey, we did it. Pretty easy, right? No film sweats. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and try a few variations in the next few rolls I developed, but so far, the Sinisto CS41 kit looks like a real winner. If you wanna see more film photography videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Until the next video, do some good, have some fun, and shoot some film.